Day three, straight from work. Oh, I should change. Better, I don't know if that transition worked. What's going on YouTube? My name's Tom and this is day three of the Scott McKenna video creation challenge. So today I wanna to talk about my personal schedule moving into 2019 and the reasons why it might look a little bit rigid to some of you. Number one is that I love the routine. I feel like I'm getting something accomplished. It's little grains of sand into a pile of me becoming the best version of myself uh, and just be, me ultimately being happier with who I am. So reason number two is to help me visualize what my day is going to look like. Now the reason that's important I've, is I really enjoy being able to kind of sit down with my thoughts and have a bit of a game plan of how the day is gonna break out. And to do this and expect it to work out the whole year is a bit of a stretch so you'll see I've built again I've built some flexibility into this for things that will come up but ultimately there's a few key points that will happen every day at least every other day none of these things on this list will get broken at more than two days in a row okay that's really really important so reason number three why I have all this rigidity built into my schedule is that I want to accomplish specific goals in 2019 and by allotting how much time I actually have in a day, I can very clearly see how I'm going to get to those goals. So for example, one of my goals for 2019 is that I want to work up to being able to run 25 kilometers. Some of you, that sounds crazy. Some of you are probably already doing that. For me, I've never been into marathon or ultra marathon or half marathon or even running around the block. So I've started slowly building up to around 5K, uh, daily-ish three four times a week kind of run I want to get that closer to 25 kilometers by the end of the year by building it into my schedule is the only way I'm actually going to get there so it's a little bit of accountability to myself so that's enough about me talking about why I'm doing this let's get right into it oh, okay so I got my phone so I'm going to look down a little bit but I got you wake up what time do I wake up you ready for this Every morning, my first alarm goes off at 20 after 4. Yes, you heard me right. 4.20 in the morning, every day, my alarm goes off. Now, first things first. On a work day, I have to be out of the house by 6.30. Leaves me about two hours if I'm getting up at 4.30. The reason I wake up at 4.20 is that gives me enough time to wake up, get out of bed, get my clothes on to go for the run, brush my teeth, wash my face, kind of go to the bathroom, take care of those types of things, and get on the road at 4.30. It's really important to me to be on the road at 4.30. It keeps everything else going. The point is I'm waking up early enough to start my day at a pace that's comfortable for me so that I can make a good breakfast, kind of relax myself, and ease into the day. I'm not waking up with five minutes to get shove something in my face and run out the door. I've been there, done that, this way works better for me. So, 4.30 comes, start of the 5K run. Most times I'm gonna take my dog Louie with me. I'm aiming to be home by 5 a.m. It's usually not too bad, I can usually do that. Depends on the dog, sometimes he wants to sniff extra or he has to water somebody's grass. You know how it goes. And I now usually do a little bit of a play with him just to kind of cool down and stop sweating before I come back into a warm house, especially right now when it's January and it's minus 10, 15, minus 20 outside. Coming back into a house that's 20 degrees, this is Celsius by the way, <laughs> coming into a house that's 20 degrees Celsius just drenches extra sweat that there's just no, no need for that. By 5 a.m. I'm home and I'm getting ready to get in the shower. Suiting up for the day depends on the day of the week. So if it's a weekday, then you'll see me in what you just saw me in, my dirty, grubby old work clothes. Or if I have my other job, then you'll see me in my, my uniform. And if I'm not going to work, then you'll see me in something like this, right? So I make an intention to get dressed every morning. It's really easy to laze around in your PJs. If I feel like if I'm getting dressed, I'm winning. And it's every little step along the way, every little victory starts to add up to battle my own personal anxiety and make me feel like a winner within myself. By 5.30, I'm making breakfast. I make a breakfast. I don't just grab 
some toast. Like I sit down, I have a smoothie, usually some eggs and some meat or something. Like I'm having a real protein rich breakfast that's gonna last me throughout the day. Waking up early and making breakfast has changed my life. By this point, it's about six o'clock and I'm eating breakfast. I'm cleaning up my dishes. I'm warming up the car if it's winter, which it is right now, so that I can be on. So you can see I've got about an hour long window from the time I start making breakfast until the time I'm leaving. Should be lots of time. Now I now have an hour long travel starting at 6.30 that gets me to work for 7.30. During that hour long travel, I'm listening to a podcast or an audiobook or some of my own music or maybe some audio of an idea that I've recorded. Um, there's any of those things. Maybe I'm just listening to talk radio. What I'm not doing first thing in the morning is listening to music. Now, some of you are going to be like, what the hell is wrong with you? I get it. I used to love cranking my tunes, singing along, and getting the day started really rocking. The reason I don't do that anymore is I want to mentally stimulate my brain. I want to get my brain working. Because I'm engaging my brain, I'm making it work, slowly easing into the process of being engaged with the day. So 7.30 to 3.30 is work. Now this changes for me as I move into the year because my job changes around March, April-ish. I switch to a new job and this changes from 7.30 to 3.30, from 8 o'clock to 4.30. It's no big deal. Everything else will basically stay the same, move things around as we need to. It's where the flexibility comes in, is I'm not so rigid that I'm gonna develop stress and anxiety that I didn't meet my own personal timeline. There's buffer periods built into all of this so that I can still accomplish the things I wanna accomplish. So, I'm off work at 3.30, gets me home for 4.30. This is where I might introduce some music or I'm gonna finish the podcast I started or the audiobook. It all depends on how I'm feeling. Maybe I want to be motivated and I'm not feeling overly motivated. Might be a good time for the podcast or an audiobook, or it might be a good time to kick myself in the ass and put on some hard rock and music. It all depends on the day. 4.30, I pull in the driveway. Again, give or take a couple of minutes. I unload the car, empty my lunch, change my clothes, and I get myself ready to go to the gym. So this is new for me. I'm just started doing the gym. I'm signed up to go for four days a week. I've been, don't worry, I've been doing this already before you see this video. This isn't the New Year's resolution thing. This is something I started beforehand. So when I get back home, it's around six o'clock, give or take, which means I'm making, helping, or eating dinner, uh, and then cleaning up dinner. So that's the, that hour from six until seven is like sacred time in our house. That's the time where me and my wife sit down, we turn our phones off, because that's our time to connect. How was your day? How are you doing? Let's talk about whatever's on your mind. That's our opportunity to have a genuine moment with each other every single day that we're together. For the last year and a bit, at some point between 5.30 and 7, we're sitting down for dinner and the phones are off. And it's just me and her. And it's awesome. Really, really good. I'll talk more about the importance of that later. Okay, so it's 7 o'clock. Dinner's done, it's wrapped up, everything's cleaned up. What's next? Well, depends on the day. So from seven o'clock until 11 o'clock is kind of this free time zone where things are gonna be moving depending on whether it's Monday to Sunday. So one day I might have yoga, the next day I might have lacrosse, or I might be going out to band practice or whatever the thing may be that's on my agenda for that particular day, this is usually the place where it falls. Up until this point, everything else is fairly static, a little bit of bumping around with those buffer zones, but those things are fairly static. This is the dynamic portion of my day. Those are dynamic hours. Anything can happen. Okay, so that leaves us with how do I get ready for bed? All right, so around 10 o'clock, no matter what, I'm winding down, if I even make it that far. Sometimes I can't, I can't make it, I'm in bed by 9.30. It's just the way it goes. You gotta balance your sleep. But let's say I made it to 10 o'clock. So what I'm gonna do is if I haven't already, I'm gonna prep for the next day, meaning my lunch is made, anything I have to do to prepare for breakfast, it's getting ready, any clothes that need to be taken care of for the next day, they're ready, dishes are in the dishwasher, the sink's clean, all of that sort of stuff. Now, I know you're looking at me being like, bullshit, Tom, you don't do the dishes every day or you don't do your laundry every day. You're right, 
There's days where not all of these things get done. I'm human too. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else. Buffer zones. Things change. This is the target. We don't always hit the target, but we aim to hit the target every time. By 10.30, I'm in bed, so that gives me a half hour window. I've brushed my teeth, washed my face, all of those things that I need to do in the bathroom, it's done. I'm in bed, reading, or sleeping. The biggest thing for me is sleeping by 11 o'clock, hard stop. You need about five and a half hours of sleep if I'm sleeping by 11. I'm gonna consider that a late day. That's me trying to cram a lot of stuff into my free time. Most times I'm falling into bed around 10 o'clock, which gives me a solid six to six and a half hours of sleep. Very manageable, very, very manageable. I can get by on that, no problem. Some of you out there are gonna be like, I need 10 or 12 hours of sleep. Do what's right for your body. I'm not here to tell you what's, what's right for you. This is what works for me. I noticed since I've started this video challenge, there's been a couple of days where that dynamic portion of my time filled up really fast and I didn't have time to make a video. So I didn't start making a video until 10 o'clock. It happened. Yesterday's video didn't come out of my computer until midnight. It's just the way it goes. It still counts as the day. It still counts as day number two though. I'm watching you, Scott. Don't, don't you dock me marks. That's my day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed learning about a little bit about me. Hopefully there's no stalkers out there. Ooh. Like I said, things are dynamic, so I'm not worried about an appointment coming up and changing my plans. I'm not worried about a friend calling me up out of the blue saying, hey man, let's hang out, I haven't seen you in forever. Those types of things are going to happen. I've built in those buffer zones. I've built in expectations that life is constantly going to be throwing me curveballs. I'm not worried when my timeline doesn't get met. I save that energy to focus on what it is that's happening. I, I got a flat tire, my car broke down, I need to fix that. I don't have to worry about the fact that I didn't meet my own personal expectation with this particular deadline. Tomorrow's a new day, I get to begin again and again and again, as long as I keep waking up. <laughs> All right, that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're watching this, Leave a comment down below, let me know you're watching. Let me know what you think of my schedule. Leave your schedule down below too. If there's things that match up in our time frames, if there's something that's unique about you, share it with everybody else that happens to be watching and commenting. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. For now, that's it for day number three. Day three has been a tough one. I really did not want to sit down and do this, but here I am. So I'm gonna edit this, get it out, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care of yourselves, peace.